This presentation will discuss erodibility parameters. And at the end of the presentation, you will be able to describe the initiation of erosion using erosion laws. You will also be able to evaluate the erodibility parameters of different soils using a variety of different methods. After an overview of soil erodibility, I will discuss the test methods that can be done to measure the erodibility parameters of a soil. Then to illustrate the importance of soil erodibility, I will show some videos of large-scale field erosion tests that will help put things into perspective. Describing soil erodibility can be thought of as two questions. First, under the applied hydraulic loads, does erosion occur? And second, if erosion can occur, how quickly does it erode? Soil erodibility influences whether erosion will initiate within a concentrated leak. And it influences the rate of erosion, which is important to know when evaluating the progression phase of all the different internal erosion processes. For example, if the rate of erosion is slow, there will be more time, and as a result of that time, a greater potential for upstream materials to wash in and plug a crack. Likewise, a slow rate of erosion would allow more time to detect an issue and to intervene, such as by drawing down the reservoir to reduce the gradient before things could progress to breach. Erosion can be expressed as either volume erosion or mass erosion using the excess shear equation. The erodibility parameters that define these equations are the critical shear stress along with the erodibility coefficient, which is sometimes referred to as the detachment rate coefficient for volume erosion, and coefficient of soil erosion for mass erosion. Since the rate of erosion depends on the level of shear stress due to traction of the eroding fluid, the rate of erosion is usually normalized against shear stress. For some soils, the rate of erosion per unit area is approximately linearly proportional to the level of shear stress. As shown by the plot, the slope of the best fit straight line that approximates the linear relationship represents the normalized rate of erosion per unit area, which is K sub D or C sub E. For concentrated leak erosion, the resistance to initiation is characterized by the critical shear stress. When the applied hydraulic shear stress exceeds the critical value, concentrated leak erosion will initiate. The rate of pipe enlargement in the progression phase is characterized by the erodibility coefficient K sub D. Eichold Bulletin 164 gives the following qualitative categories for soil erosion resistance based on a series of hole erosion tests. Dispersive soils and silty sands with a fines content of less than 30% will be the most erodible. The erosion resistance increases for clayey soils, with fat clays having the highest resistance to erosion. This slide shows another presentation of erosion categories based on critical velocity and critical shear stress obtained from erosion function apparatus test results performed at Texas A&M University. As shown, erosion resistance increases with increasing critical velocity or critical shear stress. Erosion is a very complex process and the erosion properties of soils depend on the factors listed here. As such, it is difficult to correlate erosion to soil properties, and it is preferable to carry out erosion tests to define the erosion properties. The most comprehensive data set of soil erodibility available is from the National Cooperative Highway Research Program Erosion Study, which consisted of nearly 1,000 erosion tests. Around 750 erosion tests were collected from the literature review as well as by contacting researchers and organizations working on erosion around the world. Empirical equations for erodibility were developed based on this data. However, only about 100 of the tests were done on engineered fills. The NCHRP report indicated that geotechnical properties were found to have a mixed and complex relationship with erosion resistance in general. They found that an increase in D50 leads to an increase in erosion resistance for soils with a D50 greater than 0.3 millimeters, 
and that an increase in D50 leads to a decrease in erosion resistance of soils with D50 less than 0.3 millimeters. Erosion resistance generally increases with an increase in plasticity index and in percent clay. In many cases, wet unit weight and undrained shear strength were directly proportional to erosion resistance. Not listed here, but water content seemed to have a positive impact on erosion resistance of finer soils, but a negative impact on erosion resistance of coarse grain soils in EFA testing. Results suggest that the water content alone is poorly correlated with erosion resistance. These observations, as well as regression equations, can be used as a first step to estimate erosion resistance of many soils. If by using such relationships, erosion is clearly not a problem, it is unlikely that further effort is necessary. However, if use of such equations leads to uncertainty, it is recommended that erosion tests be conducted to better define the erodibility parameters. Erosion resistance increases with compaction effort and for soils compacted wet of optimum and with increasing clay fraction. The table on this slide shows the relationship between compaction effort and erosion resistance based on testing at the USDA's Agricultural Research Service. The rate of erosion is higher if compaction occurs dry of optimum because at compaction dry of optimum, soil can form aggregated particles and or micro cracks, which allow erosion of blocks of soil. Dispersive soils can be especially problematic. Foster et al. 2000 found that 9 out of 51 piping failures through large embankment dams were in dispersive soils, and all 9 occurred on first filling. With dispersive soils, the clay particles detach from each other and from the soil structure and go into suspension upon wetting. Soils with a high exchangeable sodium percentage, such as sodium or calcium montmorillonite present, tend to be dispersive. Kaolinite and related minerals like haloisite are non-dispersive. Dispersivity also depends on poor water chemistry. Low poor water salt concentrations lead to greater dispersivity, and high salt concentrations can suppress dispersion in susceptible soils. As a result, percolation of a saline soil with fresh water can lead to dispersion. The bottom line is dispersive soils will typically have a lower critical shear stress than non-dispersive soils, with low to medium plasticity of dispersive clays being the most problematic. Erosion properties of soils can be determined by numerous tests. The listing of tests is from the table of contents of Briot et al. 2019. The erosion function apparatus, jet erosion test, and hull erosion test highlighted in red are three of the more commonly conducted tests. The erosion function apparatus was developed by Jean-Louis Briaud at Texas A&M University. The primary focus of the research was bridge pier and abutment scour, but also overtopping erosion. In the EFA, a soil sample is pushed until it is flush with a flume floor where water flows at a constant velocity. The sample is advanced to keep it flush with the floor and the time to erode is recorded. Velocity is then increased and the process is repeated. These figures show how the erodibility of soils obtained from New Orleans levees varies widely, ranging from very high erodibility to low erodibility. Velocity is plotted against erosion rate in the figure on the left, and shear stress is plotted against erosion rate in the figure on the right. Erosion resistance increases with compaction effort, but the effect is more significant for some soils, like those with higher fines content, than it is for others, like those with lower fines content. USCS group symbols are shown on these erosion charts. Soils with a given USCS group symbol do not fall distinctly into a single erosion category, but rather seem to plot approximately across two categories. These charts are a summary of general observations from the database. However, the positions are very debatable and should not be used to obtain erosion properties. They are useful to help qualitatively assess erodibility and for assigning Briod's erosion category, which is used in Zhu and Zhang regression equations for estimating embankment dam breach parameters, which will be discussed later in a separate presentation.
The jet erosion test apparatus was developed by Greg Hansen at the USDA's Agricultural Research Service, which includes the field and lab jet apparatus. It was developed for streambed erosion initially, but was then applied to spillway erosion, overtopping erosion, and concentrated leak erosion. In the jet, a jet of water is directed at the soil sample and the rate of soil removal is measured. The jet apparatus attacks the soil surface with a submerged hydraulic jet. The starting nozzle position and test head may be adjusted to vary the stress applied to the soil sample, although once the test head is selected, it is usually held constant for the duration of the test. Scour of the soil surface beneath the jet is measured over time using a point gauge that passes through the nozzle. Critical shear stress is determined based on equilibrium scour depth. The erodibility coefficient is determined based on the measured scour depth, time, predetermined critical shear stress, and a dimensionless time function. This figure shows the results of a series of jet tests on cohesive stream beds and descriptors of the erosion resistance from Hansen and Simon. Erosion resistance categories are a function of both critical shear stress, shown on the x-axis, and the erodibility coefficient, shown on the y-axis. In this figure, you can see that critical shear stress and erodibility coefficient have an inverse relationship. As the critical shear stress increases, the erodibility coefficient decreases. The whole erosion test was developed by Juan and Fell at the University of New South Wales to be a faster and more economical alternative to the slot erosion test for concentrated leak erosion. In the whole erosion test, a cylindrical sample with a hole drilled through it is placed in an apparatus and water is passed through the sample. The enlargement of the hole and loss of soil can be measured under different conditions. Juan and Fell expressed the erosion rate in the form of an erosion rate index, or IHET. Soils can be classified into six groups according to their erosion rate index. The representative erosion rate index is the IHET for the soil compacted to a density ratio of 95% of standard Proctor maximum dry density and optimum moisture content. It is applicable to erosion of materials within holes, slots, or cracks. A logarithmic scale is used and the rate of erosion of soils varies by up to five orders of magnitude. The results of 61 laboratory hole erosion tests and 47 laboratory and field jets performed by reclamation since 2007 are plotted on this figure. Although the hole erosion tests in general exhibit lower detachment rate coefficients and higher critical shear stresses, both sets of data generally follow the best fit line proposed by Hansen and Simon 2001 for jet results, as shown in blue. The red line is the updated relationship based on additional jet testing from Simon et al. 2011. As previously mentioned, erodibility coefficient and critical shear stress are inversely related, and their values vary over several orders of magnitude for compacted soils. This table shows qualitative erosion resistance for ranges of K sub B and C sub B, and hole erosion and jet tests can be compared using dry density and the equation shown. Correlations with IHET or soil classification are very approximate, and they should not be relied upon for important decisions. Ali et al. 2021 corrects the Hansen et al. 2010 values. When comparing the hull erosion and jet erosion tests, the variability of the computed erosion rate coefficients and critical shear stresses is large for both methods, about one order of magnitude for the soils tested by reclamation. The hull erosion test critical shear stress is about 50 times higher than the jet critical shear stress. Selection of a test for a specific application should be made with consideration for the intended use of the data and the internal erosion that will be most important in the application. For concentrated leak erosion, the hole erosion test is going to be the most applicable. For overtopping, the jet erosion test would be the better choice. With regards to gravel, do not use Briot et al. 2019 regression equations for coarse data sets of gravel. 
Critical shear stress for gravel can be estimated using the D50 particle size. The suggested guidance from the Risk Management Center for erodibility coefficient is provided on this slide. For GP and GW soils, use Simon et al. 2011 relationship. For GS soils, use either CL or CH relationship based on the plasticity of the materials scalped from the number 40 sieve. For GM soils, screen is for GP and GW, and if the screening fails, do field or laboratory testing. To help put things into perspective, some videos of large-scale field erosion tests will be shown, one for an extremely erodible soil and one for a moderately erodible soil. This is a video of field testing performed by USDA's Agricultural Research Service on an extremely erodible material with an extremely rapid rate of erosion. Once the reservoir was filled and water was flowing over the long weir on the upstream side of the embankment, the 40 millimeter diameter pipe was pulled from the embankment and the testing was initiated. The flow path enlarged rapidly on the downstream side and collapsed within 13 minutes of test initiation. Once collapse occurred, breach widening developed at a rapid pace. Even in early stages, a head cut developed at the flow outlet and progressed upstream internally during the erosion process. The next video shows field testing on a moderately erosion resistant material with a moderately slow rate of erosion. The erodibility coefficient is three orders of magnitude less than the test on the previous slide. The flow path on the downstream side expanded but did so very slowly over a period of 72 hours prior to termination of the test. To help you estimate the erodibility parameters of a soil, the Risk Management Center has included a compilation of estimating methodologies from a wide variety of sources within a toolbox. Worksheets are provided to help estimate the critical shear stress and erodibility coefficient. Worksheets are also provided to describe the applications for hole and jet erosion tests and for selecting an erodibility classification. As previously mentioned, soil classification is not a good indicator of erosion properties. Only use soil classification as a quick screening. For more robust predictive methods, you can use the regression equations from Briot et al. 2019, but again, only a small percentage of the data was for engineered fill. The terms natural and compacted are not what they seem at first glance. Engineered fill was included in the soils labeled as natural. Compacted soils were those soils that were recompacted in the laboratory prior to testing, so please keep that in mind. The soil density and loading history can have a significant influence on the erosion parameters. Similar to the caution previously discussed for historical rates at the beginning of this training based on the sample population, a similar caution must be used with predictive methods because the source material for the data sets can strongly influence the results.
Since the NCHRP dataset is the most comprehensive compilation and analysis to date, it is suggested to use Briot et al. 2019 regression equations to estimate the mean parameters and uncertainty. A range of input parameters should be considered, and the output should be varied by at least an order of magnitude for output to see if effects are significant. Because erodibility parameters can vary by orders of magnitude, it is important not to mask potential critical shear stress values with a wide distribution. A sensitivity analysis is recommended. If the results are significant, you can attempt to refine the estimate by selecting a subset of the data that is most representative, but it's still recommended to consider a range of input parameters, plus or minus an order of magnitude for the output, and to carry the full distribution of possibilities through the analysis. The primary references used to develop this presentation are listed here. This concludes the presentation on erodibility parameters.